think we have a problem here. Something's not right. I don't know if you can see the problem, but something just isn't right. Now, I don't know if you understand this, but somehow, I don't think this is the way it's supposed to be. You know, all overgrown and kind of like, you know, stuck in a pot. Now, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I don't know if you realize this or not. But, you know, when you have a spider plant, you know, it gets water and then you water it and it grows little babies, you know, and it kind of multiplies itself. Well, then you're supposed to take some of those babies, you know, and put them somewhere else, you know, so that you can get some other kind of thing, you know, growing. That'll produce more babies. But, no offense, you know, some of you are looking a little weird, you know. I mean, you got a whole bunch of little babies, but you're still hanging on the vine. I mean, isn't it time you, like, got out and did something? I mean, do something with all your little babies? I mean, I understand that you're connected with everybody at church, you know. It's like you're well connected and you got all those people together, you know, and you kind of like fellowship one to another and you grew in your Bible study, you know, and you know everyone and everyone knows you. You got your job, you're set in your place, you know, everything's going hunky-dory and everything's nice and fine and you kind of fluffed your leaves, you kind of grew up into the kind of person you wanted to be and now you got it all. You know, you're this beautiful, or you were, a beautiful plant. But now you got all this other stuff that's, you know, hanging around and quite frankly, I think you're blocking the view. I don't think you realize what it is you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to be like the center of attention. Do you realize that? Like maybe it's time you kind of like, you know, took the time to figure out maybe it's time to get out and do something with what you got. You know, cut off some of your branches, you know, consolidate, maybe diversify, maybe expand, you know, outward, maybe go somewhere. Maybe, if you want to kind of like get a little bit better view of it, you know, and a little better perspective, you know, like be able to see clearly, maybe you need to move your pot. <laughs> I mean, come on now. Don't you think you're a little overgrown? Maybe you become a little fat and sassy, you know, a little brassy. You know, maybe you're stuck in your place, you know, and you got your favorite pew. You know, or is it just you got your favorite little chair where you sit every week, you know, to be there? And you're there. And don't get me wrong, hey, that's a good thing. You know, maybe it's good that, you know, you've got your pew, you know, and you know what to do, you know. So, you know, you do your little volunteer here, you do your volunteer there, you go here, you go there, you do what you, you know, religious duty. But if that's you, something's wrong. I think you got a little fat and sassy. Mm-hmm. You know, you got your buds. You know, and you're just kind of like, okay, I'm happy. Here we are. We're one big, fat, sassy church. You know, I mean, when I want something, I just talk to my buds. You know, we go do what we want to do. You know. When we're hungry, we catch a Bible study. You know, when we're thirsty, we catch, you know, a little in-depth study. We go Sunday night, and, you know, we go... Wednesdays, but you know, we're part of the baseball team. We're part of the bowling league. You know, we've got our you know you know intimate fellowship together. Really? Can I ask you something? Can I get real? Can I qualify this a little bit? Can I take a little closer look? Now maybe it's just me. And uh, maybe it's because I'm a gardener. Maybe it's because, you know, I kind of noticed some things that you haven't seen, but uh, I 
I think you're a little overgrown. I think maybe it might be time to uh, move on, move up, move out, go, like Jesus said. Keith Green said an interesting thing. He said, you've been commanded to go. To go. You know, everywhere, anywhere, wherever God tells you to do, but he's commanded you to go. Not just, you know, do the weekend thing, you know, and pretend that, you know, it's like, oh, well, you know, God, I heard you, you know, I'm going. And God says, I'm talking, would you stop running your mouth so you can hear what I'm saying? Don't tell me what you can't do. I'm telling you what you can do. I want you to go over there, over here, you know. Somewhere like the song used to say, over there, over there, send the word, send the word over there, that the Christians are coming, the Christians are coming, and we're not stopping till we're there, over there, over there, get the word, take the word over there, because the Christians are coming, the Christian, oh, you don't know that song? Oh, maybe you never heard of evangelization before, you know, kind of like the missionary thing, you know, kind of like get out of your comfort zone, you know, Put stuff in the cookies in your mouth. It tastes good. I'm not spitting that out. Are you kidding me? I'm eating it. Mmm. Get another allegory. <laughs> Besides, I kind of enjoy my little belly roll. Uh, big belly roll. Uh, fat. Uh, you know, kind of like... The American, you know, way, kind of like we have this roll around us, you know, that says this is what we are. <laughs> the land of good and plenty. Good and plenty, 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 good and plenty. Choo choo! But don't bug me about, you know, over there, or over here, or next door, or right where I'm at. Because after all, I kind of like who I am. Yeah, I can see that. Maybe. Maybe there's more to your life. Maybe there's more to your choices. Maybe there's a reason why God might want you to, like, you know, get out of your uh, <laughs> overgrown state and develop into what he wants you to be might be time for some redevelopment plans you know to come into place might be time to step out of your faith into the reality of where God wants you to be Jesus Christ the same yesterday today and forever Hebrews 3 8 it is a gracious thing in our relationship with the Heavenly Father to find that he loves us for ourselves and values our love more than the galaxies of the new created worlds. The added blessing is to discover his faithfulness for what he is today and we shall find him tomorrow the same and the next day and the next day and the next year and year after year always providing, always taking care of our needs, always blessing us with spiritual blessings that we have no way to imagine all that God has in store for us if we would just yield ourselves to him as we have in the past and he has made us into a little overgrown. Actually, the fellowship of God with his redeemed family is beyond all telling. He communes with his redeemed ones in an easy, uninhibited fellowship that is restful and healing to the soul. He is not sensitive, nor selfish, nor temperamental. He's not hard to please, though he may be hard to satisfy. He expects of us only what he has himself first supplied to us. He is quick to mark every simple effort of ours to please him, and just as quick to overlook imperfections when he knows we meant to do his will. Surely he loves us for ourselves, Unfortunately, many Christians cannot get free from the perverted notions about God or of God, and these notions poison their hearts and destroy their inward freedom, their joy of doing what God inspired them to do way back when, when he said, go, and he said, I know, but I'm afraid. These friends serve God grimly as the elder brother did, doing what is right without enthusiasm and without joy and seem altogether unable to understand the buoyant 
spirited celebration when the prodigal comes home. The idea of God rules out the possibility of his being happy in his people. How good it would be if we could learn that God is easy to live with and he is the sum of all patience and the excellence of the essence of kindly goodwill. Oh, that God would cause us to grow out of our being as the son who never left and stayed at home tending to the father and the brother and the mother and the sister and the neighbor and the friend and the relative. And then we see those that come home and we're not so happy because we've been there all along doing the right thing. I wonder if overgrown doesn't have to be with overblown about who we are. Because a lot of times you see that a prodigal son is so thrilled to come home that he rejoices in everything he sees and finds loving him for that choice that he's made to come home to the Father. For surely as we started in the beginning with a penny paid to us for our service unto the Lord our God, and then we see those that were hired at noon receiving the same wages, and we see those that come at the last minute grasping with desperation to the Lord our God with their fingernails receiving likewise the same wages, a penny. Do we dare say it's unfair? Or rather, should we not be likened unto the one that's clinging to just the neighbor or the friend and relative says, please tell me of my father. Tell me of the good news again. I have need to hear what I have forgotten is so near to me. The love of my father for me. Would you go out from where you are to share that with the desperately wicked those who are in need? Or would you rather stop with those that stand in the reality of standing in their righteousness and claim, oh, we don't talk to those people. They're not even Americans. No, you know, we want to ship them out of the country. No, that's not our kind of president, you know. After all, he's not one of us. He's one of them. Are we overgrown and overblown in our misunderstandings? that we're not comprehending why God has grown us up into the type of person we are, so full of blessings and honor and glory and majesty and might and growth and development that have we become overgrown? Have we forgotten what first things are first things? Do we know how to do it again from the beginning? Or rather, are we just like, you know, happy and content to, you know, be kind of fat, kind of, you know, overgrown, kind of root bound, because we're found that our roots have become oh so satiated in the limitations we put upon God in our life. Would you be like Jesus? Or would you be like this particular, oh, I don't know little tiny, 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 tiny new growth that can't grow any larger because you're in the way. That you're sucking all the sustenance out of the soil. That you're absorbing all the growth material that some new Christian, some baby Christian, some little one can't grow because you already know it all. You've done it all. You've experienced it all. Sometimes I'm looking at myself going, yeah, I have, but you know, that's not me. <laughs> Lord, are you talking to me or are you talking to them? You know, like, which way are we going here, Lord? What are you going to do with this? You know, I'm like, okay, God. <laughs> or do we need to cut off some of our own importance? Is there a time and a place where you can say, I must decrease, but he must increase? That we can get out of the way and let someone else step in our shoes and take over the ministry that we're doing, that we think we are the ones in charge? Could we step away from that which we have grown up into and go out and do what God has told us to do from the very beginning? Go and teach all nations. Will you be that overgrown Christian? Because you know God loves you. You know God's blessed you. You know God will take care of you. You know God's provided. You may have gotten comfortable now thinking that, oh, your job is so secure that you don't want to interrupt that or deny yourself your job security, your job integrity, your retirement account, 
your safety in your community, your perplexing idea of that this is where God's called you to be, and so you're going to put your roots down and bind yourself root bound to the place you're at. I don't know. I only know what I see. I don't know exactly what you see. I only know what God sees. And believe me, He loves you. So whether you're kind of root bound, you know, kind of like, you know, a master disaster, or whether you're just a planting of the Lord, wow, you know, put in its right place, that'd be beautiful, the contrast of the red and the green. Ooh, you know, maybe if we put it up and put some lights on it, it would grow, and it would be huge, and it would bear much fruit, and it would grow its own little babies. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe root bound isn't such a bad thing. Maybe root found, when you look at your roots, might determine where you are if you'll take a look at yourself and realize, hey, what is God speaking clearly to me? Not what do I think I should do, but what does God speak to me clearly about? What does God speak openly to me about? What has God spoken to me last? that maybe I forgot to do first. Like I said, I have to ask myself when I look at this plant, am I talking about myself? Or am I talking about you? I don't know. can see if that plant doesn't need you know to be transplanted because you know what maybe I'm a little different than you because I see a problem with this plant and so I'm going to have to cut off some of its new growth so that it can bear more fruit and cause even more to grow and that its roots that once I do cut it off once I do move it into a bigger planter, once I cause it to be out of its root-bound condition, its stalk will get bigger, and it will be huge, spreading its arms under, under the heavens. Wow! Imagine that, being bigger to be root-bound in a bigger capacity. Maybe that motivates some people. <laughs> Not me, man. I'm out of here. But no. But the point being is, Look, you can't grow if you're root bound. You gotta cut off the branches. Then you gotta enlarge the container. Then you gotta water more. You gotta build up that growth again so that you could maybe, you know, kind of like step out one more time. Maybe step farther out than you've ever stepped before. Maybe go the extra mile that you didn't go the first time that you got root bound. Maybe it's time you found out whether or not God is talking to you or me.